First and foremost, we're going to section away the top of the head in a very simple box section, which works wider at the front where the recession is and more narrow towards the back of the head where the head sticks out and protrudes. And then we've worked a horizontal panel on the apex zone, which separates the crown away from the top of the head. Realistically, we're only working with two zones and sections on this haircut. Let's start off now by working some diagonal sections where we're working longer at the top of the section and shorter towards the bottom of the fingers. This will allow me to build up a triangular shape on the vertical axes and a round shape on the horizontal axes. The whole point of this method that we're working through the sides of the head is to encourage the hair to sit backwards in its natural form and shape. So the way that we're going to do that is by working backward diagonal sections, working from the front temple all the way back in towards where the section finishes. We can see that we're going to be working section one off the base and section two is going to be off the base also, where section one is being over-directed up in towards section two. So not only as we work up this zone, are we looking to increase the length and weight towards the curvature, but also as we work around the back of the head, we're also looking to increase the length and weight in terms of dimension to the head shape. This is what will give you a beautiful classic graduated look where it's shorter at the front and longer and heavier towards the crown area. What's essential is that we get the nape area right and we don't over direct too much underneath the occipital bone. Once we finish the main technique of graduation, it's a good idea to work through the horizontal shape and just cross check that we do see that beautiful round fluid shape from the front in towards the back. We can use our wide teeth of the comb to have a look at this and pull out the hair and make sure if there's any small bits to take off and refine, then we can do that now. We shouldn't see any corners of weight running through the horizontal shape at all, but we should find that there is a slight point right in the center where the longest point will be. The vertical shape will not only allow us to see the length that we want to retain at the frontal area, which is really important on this haircut, but also have complete control in that vertical cutting line that we're creating on the top of the head zone. We're going to be cutting a complete square shape running through the top of the head, which will allow us to retain length and be the longest point at the frontal zone where the front can sit back over the top of the middle area. The most common problem when people cut the square shape is to round the front off slightly without actually realizing. So this is what we want to avoid by really focusing on the root and where we're pulling up the hair. As we come in towards the back of the head, we're gonna start rounding off that square shape. We can see that the hair still has that natural bend to it and we can move it around very easily and change the styling or increase the volume or flatten the volume. But we now have something that is more compact and more controlled and is 100% dry, which is important for us to now go in and start texturizing and personalizing the haircut. The choice of texturizing technique is going to be worked with point cutting, working with my classic scissors. This is important because we want to be very precise with where we texturize the haircut on this specific area. The majority of the texturization is going to be done through the top and the side area around the curvature. This is generally where the colored area of the hair still is, where the hair is bleached, because when hair is bleached, it generally expands and becomes thicker and denser. So we want to increase movement and texture with the styling, generally where the bleached hair still is. To finish off the first side of personalization, we're now working with the feather razor to then just work over the top of the hair shaft, working from the mid length all the way through in towards the end. And this will help me take away the internal density through the nape area. At the moment, it's quite thick and quite dense. So we're just going to work with this texturizing technique to remove the density and soften out the edges to make more of a cleaner finish although we are keeping a softer look One through the second side, where again, it's imperative that the hair is combed and styled in the way that the client is going to wear it before we go in with the clipper work. We've now placed on the 2.5, come back into the hair shaft in the same way that the hair is going to take away that density from the temple area. And then we're going in with our shorter lengths and started to naturally blend out that hairline very visually with the shorter guards. We can see from the front profile with the finished look, we have that beautiful triangular shape working from the front profile from the bottom to the top of the haircut. From the side profile, we can see the longest and most elongated length at the front, gradually getting shorter towards the crown area for again, that classic pompadour look. The colors working beautifully with the blend in towards the brown area. And then we have that sharpness with the taper around the sideburn just to really freshen up the look. Thanks for watching this classic pompadour haircut tutorial, guys. We hope that you enjoyed it. 
and we hope that you enjoyed the result. We'll see you on the next one.